I did intend to be a physics major when I went to college. Uh, my mother was a math major in college, my dad was a doctor, and I wanted to be an astronaut. There were a few problems with that. Uh, mainly, there were no women astronauts. Also, it required a whole lot of math and science, and that clearly was not in the cards for me. I was lucky enough to go to law school at the University of Texas in Austin. I have been really fortunate in my life that the jobs that I've had have come through friends. When I got out of law school and started looking for jobs and thought about where am I going to go, I uh, used my friend Bob Mann, my old professor, as a reference. And he said, well, I have just joined the Federal Communications Commission. I have an attorney position, and if you're interested, you know, come work for me. The FCC had started the proceedings for uh, the spectrum allocation that ultimately became cellular, so I got to the FCC at a really good time for that. Then I went to the small law firm, Becker, Gurman, Lucas Myers, O'Brien, and McGowan. Um, and that was several months before the first actual applications were submitted. And we filed applications for a number of the round one markets. I think it was nine markets. In 1984, one of my former colleagues from the FCC um, called and said his buddy had been hired to start this new trade association. And um, his friend, Bob Mayer, uh, had come from Capitol Hill and knew everything about the legislative process, but knew absolutely nothing about wireless or cellular. So he said, why don't you come talk to him and just fill him in? And, uh, you know, we talked for a couple of hours. I, I thought the next morning, oh, I think he offered me a job. And uh, that's how I ended up at CTIA. CTIA had been formed in that spring, and I joined that fall as the second employee. Those were great years because that's when all the really exciting, to me, exciting stuff was happening. Liz's great gift was her ability to bring together people who were competitors and who were also very different personalities. One of the fellows at Motorola described it in the, in the technical standard side as, you know, you're trying to get porcupines to dance with each other. I worked most in the, in the early uh, years on roaming issues. And the first uh, task was to develop a billing record so that the carriers could actually capture revenue when subscribers use their phones in other markets. Cybernet, which Liz Maxfield was responsible for and oversaw for years and years and years and years. The cellular intercarrier billing exchange record. Carriers all agreed that this is how they would transmit information back and forth. And we worked for a couple of years uh, through the standards process. So we established a cooperative net settlement. Eventually, we took it international. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 25th anniversary of Cellular and the launch of the Wireless History Foundation. In June of 2008, we incorporated the Wireless History Foundation. I was delighted to step in as executive director and help collect the story of wireless. She's tirelessly traveled around the country uh, getting oral and written histories. Thanks to her efforts, uh, we'll, uh, future generations will know a lot more about how this industry started. I am so fortunate to have worked with amazing folks uh, through that whole journey. I think it's fabulous that Liz Maxfield has been selected for the Hall of Fame because Liz Maxfield for so long has been the soul of the wireless industry.